Welcome back to Fast Market on the TD Ameritrade Network. I'm Tom White, joined by my co-host Kevin Hinks. But let's bring in our next guest for our cash tag segment, and that's Andy Swan, the co-founder of Lightfolio. Thanks for being here, Andy. Hey, no problem. Glad to be here. All right. So we've got uh, airline earnings coming out. Uh, UAL after the close today. American Airlines tomorrow morning ahead of the open. Uh, you know, it seems like uh, you know we've we've been talking repeatedly over the last month or so about. Uh, you know, the prices on flights uh, across the country, capacities down, jet fuel prices going up. But then you look at Delta Airlines on their report a couple weeks ago, uh, and, you know, they all seem to be doing well in this environment despite those rising input costs. Is the demand still there, according to your data, like Folio, uh, for people flying around? Yeah, it is. When we look at Total mentions of the airlines and, and people wanting to fly, that demand is definitely pent up. I think um, there's there's a certain amount of time that pent up demand can overcome uh, price increases and that sort of thing, but that window uh, may be closing. Um, when we look at you know each of the airlines, we see year over year gains near double over where they were a year ago in terms of the number of people talking about booking flights, interested in flights with those airlines. <laughs> pretty well across the board, uh, although I'd say United the biggest lagger uh, of the group. But what really concerns us about the outlook that the companies can give, and, I, and um, you know, this has changed over the last two weeks, is the huge spike in the number of people complaining about rising flight prices. I know just anecdotally, as I was looking at some flights, um, you know, a couple weeks ago leading into Easter weekend, um, it was incredible how quickly flight prices were increasing. It seems like every time I refreshed the search, they kept increasing. And we're seeing that sentiment in consumers across the country and across the English speaking world now at record highs in terms of the number of people talking about rising flight prices. So I think there's this battle going on between, you know, it's been a long time. We'd like to get out, we want to do something. The masks are finally gone. Now is the time to travel. That pinup demand uh, combating with these rapidly increasing airline flight costs um, is a is a the key battle I think that we're going to have to watch. And I think it's going to make these airlines very reluctant to give any super clear guidance going forward. I mean, if I'm in the airline industry at this point, after two years of COVID and now uh, oil prices going up because of a a war across the globe, I pretty much throw my hands up and say, we don't exactly know what's going to happen next. We're just trying to react in real time uh, to both demand and supply and, and and figure this out along with you guys. Andy, when you break these down, because we do get, we have um, United Airlines and American coming out in the next you know, 24 hours. And you and I, we, we, on this show, you and I and Tom have talked many times about the different airlines and how they're switching back and forth in popularity, right? And, and it used to be Delta and Southwest that were the best service. United Airlines and American down at, at, at the bottom that kind of flipped during COVID. Remember, you, we, we couldn't really understand why United was making such a surge and Delta was sinking. Are you seeing any return? Because some of your numbers have united back down low in terms of mentions. You've got American up 100%. Is that, do you see that as maybe an outlier? Are you seeing any of the return to the normal numbers that we saw pre-COVID? Yeah, I think the one return that we can say we're seeing, you know, for sure is that, that return to Delta in terms of the category leader yeah. of experience. There was something going on during COVID where, you know, you had to wear a mask on the flight. Everything was depersonalized to the extreme. Every flight was kind of the same, uh, no matter which airline you went on. Now, as restrictions lift, as people get more comfortable, you know, the companies that are used to, a, to providing a higher level of service are able to do so much faster than those that didn't. And we think that uh, Delta will be the one uh, that comes out of the pack that's able to uh, reinvigorate that consumer enthusiasm for flying the best out of the others. But at the end of the day, it really comes down to the cost of the flight. That's the primary driver of, of consumer behavior at this point. 
And um, with, with prices kind of going out of control to the upside, it's really difficult to see how any of these companies wins in the short term. Yeah, and I think that that goes into the inflationary, uh, you know, environment that we're in. Andy, you mentioned, uh, you know, your your chart says consumer mentions of rising flight prices, and, and I've seen that on a daily basis. Anytime I try to go book a flight, it just it blows my mind. But at the same time, some of the other inflationary pressures in the hotels uh, and uh, you know, gas prices, everything everything's going up. So at what point does it break? Where even if oil prices go down. The airlines don't have to lower their ticket prices because demand's going to continue to be there for these. But at the same time, everything else on that trip that you're trying to take is also going up exponentially. Do you feel like there's a breaking point soon for some of these airlines? Yeah, I do. I mean, you know, kind of one of my favorite sayings is that inflation uh, creates deflationary pressures. I mean, as things get more expensive, consumer demand has to come down. And you're, you, you're exactly right. I think it's a key point when you talk about these airlines, especially for leisure travel, is that everything else involved in that trip has gotten substantially more expensive or is going to, and it makes, the, it makes everything tougher to do. And so I think uh, what I would like to see is how the consumer reacts to these prices over a sustained period of time. It's really difficult to figure out right now because, like I said, these last couple of weeks have been a massive acceleration in the number of people complaining about flight prices. And so I think once we see that stable stabilize, then we'll be able to look at which airlines are, are getting the demand uh, to hold and which are seeing it drop off. I think that the ones that provide the best experience like Delta, we'll see demand hold, and the others will see significant drop-offs very, very quickly. That's my prediction. Yeah, you know, Andy, so far, I believe in what you're talking about. Elasticity of demand is starting to uh, affect some of these travelers, and that in itself should be the correcting uh, mechanism that it usually is. TSA data, we watch TSA data a lot on this show. I mean, the last seven days, only two days below 2 million people. And there's a couple 2.3 millions and a lot of 2.2s in there. So the numbers are still high and still strong. You haven't seen any drop off. Now, we're coming out of spring break season. It was a late Easter. So you can probably see some of the numbers there. And as summer drops off, you know, so far, Ed Bastian from Delta has really guided to, to, to strength. We're going to get two more guidances coming out in the next 24 hours from United and American. Both these stocks have rallied since the uh, April 13th release of Delta's numbers. So the question is, from a stock perspective, how do you look at these two names in terms of uh, I've got United since the 13th of about 9%, a little over 9%. So some of this good news, some of the guidance that from Ed Bastian and Delta is already in this name. How cautious should you be? Because, you know, let's face it, this is not going to be a short haul to climb out of this problem in these airlines. They've all got older jets. They've all got to start replenishing. So uh, what do you see as the short-term and long-term future of these airlines, Andy? Well, I think for American, you, you know, you could be all right. I think United is the one that I'm worried about the most. Uh, I think they have the most to lose. The fact that they've rallied uh, along with uh, sure. Delta is a disconnect for me because they aren't the same company. They don't provide the same experience. They may have the same short-term tailwind of that, you know, kind of demand, you know, pent-up demand flowing into things. But they just don't do a, a good job of making customers happy when prices are high. Uh, the customers that aren't going to go to, to uh, United. So that's the one I'm definitely worried about the most. I think that, that it has the most risk uh, as we move forward. And uh, Delta would be my pick of the bunch uh, to continue to do well. So I think the fact that the leader, the best of the bunch, reported first actually could have set the rest of the airlines up uh, for significant disappointment as we go through uh, the rest of the earnings season and into the summer. Yeah, and, uh, you know, that delta with that good report and that good outlook, the stocks have already responded to yeah. that report. Uh, so that's uh, that's key there. 
And no masks anymore. I'm going to be happy about that, having my cocktail on my plane without pulling down my mask. But then also, you know, all these airline companies took federal money to sustain themselves through the pandemic, which I get. Now, where are they as far as capacity goes? Because I think that's one of the big key questions here and why prices are so high. They haven't increased capacity uh, back to 2019 levels, and that's keeping prices high also. But we'll have to keep watching uh, to see if we see a break in some of these fare prices. All right, Andy, great stuff as always. Thanks. All right, that's Andy Swan, the co-founder of Like Folio, joining us, giving us the breakdown. Now, Kev.